Yes, yes, y'all. CFRU 93.3 FM. That was Fatty Switches. Live for this music. And we got the homie on the phone with us right now. What's good, brother? Yo, what's happening, man? It's good to be back. Yes, yes. It's been a few months. Been a minute, been a minute, brother. Yeah, man, I appreciate the opportunity. It's always good to be on Vocal Kinetics. Yeah, man. Robbie G, what's good, man? Not too much. Just chilling out. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time to do do the little interview talk talk thing, man. I like uh, chatting it up with you. Obviously, one of the homies from way back, from time, from back hey, in the Dizzy. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It's crazy, man. How long we've been doing this for? Like, jeez, looking back, a decade now. Yeah, a decade. Man, and on and a decade in and. Man, you're right where you should be after ten years. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel yeah, I feel pretty pretty happy about where I'm at for sure. Definitely, the work, hard work's paying off. I know for everybody around here that's been putting in putting in work, it's uh, it's slowly starting to come around, and we're able to uh, to do what we love. It's nice. That's what's up. Fun living, fun living, word up. So what's crack lacking with you? You got that video out there, Live for This Music. People go and go and check that. And you're also obviously staying uh, active doing the shows and stuff like that, always around uh, in, in Guelph here and out in Hamilton as well. Now that uh, you're holding down the scene there, what's uh, what's that like, the move been like from coming from here and heading out there? Well, it's definitely new. I mean, being from the small town of Fergus, and then I only lived in Guelph for a few months, but, I, I mean, I went to high school there. I was born in Guelph. I've always repped the city. But then coming to Hamilton, which is, it's just, like, it's a big city, you know what I mean? So it's, it's been an adjustment. But, man, I, I love the city. I love Hamilton. You know, uh, before coming here, I always thought, you know, Hamilton kind of has a bad rep, you know what I mean? So coming here, I kind of pictured it being a little bit grimy and that. But, hey, man, you know, every city's got its bad spots, but, this is a beautiful city to be in. I'm telling you. Yeah, man. I see the pictures you post and like the parks you're going to and the all, all the little things and stuff. It's nice. Yeah, man. I mean, the water isn't that nice, but but you know, Bayfront Park. Damn, it's beautiful down there. I just had a picnic there with my girl yesterday, man. Like, Bayfront. it's a real nice spot. Word up, word up. So the water's not nice. What do you mean by the water's not nice? Well, I mean. You know, the steel factory has been there for over a century, and uh, it's it's definitely not the cleanest water. There's signs up saying not to go swimming in it because, like, the bacteria and that. I wonder if you can, like, go and research. I wonder if there's, like, some history of, like, some crazy deformities, like people swim there, and then all of a sudden they've got, like, seven fingers or something on one hand. I don't know, man. Like, I see dogs, people take their dogs swimming in there, and I'm like, I, I wouldn't bring my dog here. No way. Yeah, that's dangerous. My dogs went in a couple of ponds and like got ear infections and stuff, and those are just you know natural swamp style ponds and stuff. Like I would definitely not take them there, no way. But other than that, I mean, the city's got some beauty. You know, there's uh, it, it's kind of weird because there's like you know the far east end's pretty nice, and then in between there and downtown you've got a couple of grimy areas and then downtown's got some nice spots but then there's a little couple pockets that i you know i try to avoid like on barton street and that but then again some parts of barton are really nice you know what i mean so it's definitely it's hit or miss but you know and it's no guelph don't get me wrong but it, it's it's a beautiful place to be at word up word up yeah man yeah no i like and it every time i come back yeah the lots music. of music you know, the, the hip-hop scene, really, and what we're doing is just starting to pick up, thanks to you, thanks to some of the stuff that you've been helping out with around here and that. But, uh, you know, obviously, Hamilton's got its reputation for the rock scene. You know, Arkell's coming out of Hamilton. They're, they've they been doing their thing. They're pretty big now. And, uh, yeah, I'm just excited to be here. You know, new opportunities. Word up, definitely. Yeah, no, Hamilton's got a good scene, even for hip hop. Like, there's a lot of a lot of promotional companies uh, out of Hamilton that do a lot of great work for bringing big shows there. I know recently, like, I was just talking on the show here a couple weeks ago when I went out to Hamilton to see the uh, the cookout where it was Decisive, Socrates, CL Smooth, and Apathy, and that was madness. Yes, the cookout too. Yes, yes, I had to work that day, but. But yeah, I heard that was pretty dope. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. 
Yeah. Good okay. food. Yeah, yeah, good. F- oh, yeah, man. They had like some special sh- chef type, uh, like barbecue. It wasn't like your homie on the barbecue type thing. It was like a a barbecue truck type thing. You know what I mean? And yeah. they had like specials, and they had this thing. Uh, I don't know what the heck it was. It was like, what did they call it? I don't know, but it was just a lit like a little sandwich burger that had like uh pulled pork kind of or like yeah i think it was pulled pork it, but just so good bro like insanity it was really good so but it just took forever it was like you ordered your thing because there's so many people like ordering food there it was like backed up for like a half an hour so like you place wow. your order you have to wait a half an hour to eat before you get to eat it so that was kind of whack but other Damn, than that, they, need, cool. they needed my help down there, did they? They did, brother. They did. Or you need to get your fry truck or whatever, some cooking truck. For those of you that don't know, Fatty Switches is a professional chef, a gourmet chef. He makes all sorts of crazy, cool food concoctions. I've gone over and had some some good eats at Fatty Switches' spot. And, uh, you know what I mean? So you got that side of things too. And you you know what I mean? You've had that idea of eventually getting like some sort of mobile vehicle of food and that yeah, would be man, ideal point, for those shows at some point i mean i'm not a i'm not a certified chef like i didn't go to school but i've been cooking for 11 years now longer than i've been doing this hip-hop thing and um you know it's what i do professionally to to make ends meet and um yeah man i love cooking for my friends you know um people tell me man i would buy that off you so they've kind of sparked little ideas that i've got going on brewing um, I'm trying to take it one thing at a time, you know what I mean? Be successful at promoting in that, and then I'm going to be branching out into different avenues for sure. You know, I've got the clothing coming up. I've got, I'm going to be bottling some barbecue sauces that are just off the wall. And, um, yeah, man, I've got a couple little creations that you won't find in the store that, that I'm going to be selling by the bottle as well. So definitely keep your ears peeled for that because, uh, it's coming. It's coming, and it's going to be hot. Yeah, man. In the cooking industry, that's what's good. Yep. Cooking, You know, cooking. there's not a crazy amount of money to be made unless you're, like, one of the top chefs. But, you know, if you take it into your own hands, you know, uh, one one thing I'm trying to live by, um, you if you don't go out there and create your own dreams, you're just going to be creating other people's dreams. So do it for yourself and don't just sit there and make money for someone else for your entire life. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Definitely. You can make your own dreams happen. And even when you are working for somebody else or working in their factory or working in their kitchen or working at their shop, you can also be just gaining the skills that you need in order to branch out and be able to do it on the, on your own as, as an independent person. But at the same time, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that work that nine to five job and they're, you know, they're happy in their, their means of just like picking up, you know, getting the check at the end of the day. And that's, you know, that's totally cool. Kudos to all the people that are out there just working to get that money and hustle and provide for their families, provide for themselves, you know what I mean? And, and, and living life and live within your means too, people, Jesus, and Enough people we don't we don't uh we don't act our wage i say this too many times and that's that's what's up man you know for me it's always family first um there's there's tons of things that i want to do you know i want to go and invest you know a couple grand into getting a clothing line started up but but you know i gotta pace myself because straight up family's first i got kids you know i want to have more and um it's just you know yo act your wage that's what's up man Definitely. That's the message to the youth. And stop watching so many reality TV shows. <laughs> Poison your brain. It's coming from the man that doesn't even watch TV. You know what I'm saying? That's Forget what I'm reality saying. TV doesn't even, doesn't even plug that TV in. Yeah, I know, but I do catch a little bit here and there. I see somebody else or hear something else, and I, I just... It's a wacky world out there, people. It's crazy. They can stick a camera on anybody and it goes on TV and they're famous. It's madness. It's madness. You know what? I just thought of, uh, I didn't, I didn't ever post my comments on that cereal you got to be getting on because you know I'm about my gourmet cereal and shit. Your gourmet cereal. Oh my goodness. Tell me this. I need to hear, I need to hear about your your gourmet cereal, please. The first thing you got to do is just take the most basic 
sugarless cereal, Cheerios, plain, plain cornflakes. Even take your life cereal, and if you're bored of it, spice it up a bit. You know what I'm saying? Spice it up, yeah, I always man. like to pour, like, just half a bowl of cereal, maybe, like, two-thirds, and then I'll load up some dried cranberries, and I'll put some shaved coconut on that. Ooh, shaved, even, shaved coconut. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm, now we're talking. I'm on that shaved coconut tip, bro. Slivered almonds. Slivered get almonds, yes. In there and get your fatty acids for the day. Fatty, you know, is that what I get from slivered almonds? I get fatty acids? Yeah, your omega-3s and that. Um, that's yeah, from, no. That's no, no, that. sorry, the walnuts, the, the walnut chunks. Okay, settle down now. And protein, right? You get your protein out of that. And um, some cinnamon. Put some cinnamon in your cereal. So good for you. Cinnamon it, in my it, cereal. It's a great way to start your day, too. If you get cinnamon off the hop, if, if you wake up and you... Just take boiling hot water with some cinnamon, and if you need a sweet, like a little bit of honey, that's the best way to kick your metabolism up for the day, man. Okay, kick it up. What? What? How does kicking my metabolism up? What? What does well, that mean? Well, people break that say down I for me. Metabolism, so I never gain weight. You're one of those people. You know what I mean? I think it's more because you do a lot of exercise. But if you're not the type of person that can always be active. You need to keep your metabolism moving. You need to keep it working. You got to wake it up when you get up, and you got to keep it steady throughout the day. You know, you can't just get up, wait a couple hours, do what you got to do, eat some food, and then wait all day to eat more food. You got to get up, feed yourself, and then have healthy, light snacks every two hours. See, that's where I have a problem. See, I'm glad we're getting into this this conversation. Just recently, a couple weeks ago, I had a nutrition specialist, like, uh, it's like a life coach dude from London that I met randomly on the street out there. He was a super dope guy. Andrew West is his name. You can check out the the interview on on uh, on YouTube. Go and check. Honestly, dude, it's worth the listen for this one. It's like. Like he gets into some deep, deep stuff. I I got to Josh to sit and listen to the whole interview the other day just because I'm like, What's you need that, to hear Andrew this. West, Andrew West, bro, Andrew West, uh, Robbie G interview or something on YouTube. Search that link and listen to it, bro. It's deep, man. He goes into like some serious stuff, just about like guy his stuff from his interview. I'm still contemplate like to the, this day. Like even today, I was like going through some of the things that he was saying. Like it's still affecting me. I'm like this guy nailed some some points right on the head. But anyway. Um, he got really deep into just like nutrition and stuff and I'm trying to get better myself just getting better at eating more healthy working out and exercising every day and uh, and also helping people around me to to do the same right not by pushing anybody but the people in my life that are concerned about that and want to want to help themselves too. you do the whole group effort thing and everybody works together and checks up on each other and and it makes you you know get you get a little bit better at, uh, at at doing that healthy thing. The one thing I'm suffering with right now is like, I have a really big problem with eating in the morning, right? I wake up and I go, I generally go about two hours, three hours sometimes, maybe four without even eating any, anything. Man, try the cinnamon water. If you if Cinnamon you make, water? Yeah, so brew like, brew water, like you like you're brewing a tea, but instead of using tea, just a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. It's what gonna the be strong. heck? Yeah. You're talking Cinnamon about strong. cinnamon and water. Yeah. So, <laughs> so boiling, boiling hot water, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, wow. a little bit of honey. You know, if you need the sweetness, you can put a teaspoon of honey. I, I'd like to do it without the honey because even though it's... Because you're a it's boss because you can take it like, like that. <laughs> I like to limit my sugars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but do the, do the cinnamon thing. It will make you hungry. Within a half an hour, you're going to have to eat something. Really? Yes. Believe me. Try it. It makes you hungry. But then I just ignore. What if I ignore the hunger after? That's my oh, thing. I'll be hungry still. I'll be like, yo, two hours into the day, I'll be hungry. I'll be like, nah, just wait a couple when hours. Your, your body tells you when you need something. And if you ignore it, then it's just not then healthy, it's then so. it's just my own fault right yeah like when <laughs> what how what do you know can you break down scientifically what happens when our stomach gurgles and we're like it's like i know you're not a doctor or anything but what the heck is that should we google i'm not it? exactly sure like my educated guess would be something to do with I'm the gas. google that like something to do with the gas is shifting around because your stomach's so empty so it's got room to move um but i but i think it's just 
what happens is when you don't have food, um, you're, you start to digest the proteins that you need in your body. So you, you won't have as much energy. You know what I mean? You need to have some proteins and fat stored there. I, I don't know the science is behind it, so it's some people might call me out on that. That's just what I believe. I, I'm not sure, but it, I do know it's not good to not eat when you're hungry. That's all I know. To not- My big problem right now, I know you know this. I don't know if the people really know, but I've been sober now for coming up to nine months. Congratulations. And That's big. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was a big change I needed to make in my life. You know, and that I, means no sober means no drinking and and no consuming of the marijuana drug <laughs> or any other such substance. It's completely yeah. clean lifestyle, Matt. Completely it's clean crazy. for seven months, off the booze for nine. Pow. Yeah. So so I, I November first of last year I stopped drinking right after my champagne birthday. I had a crazy Halloween weekend, and um, you know. Popped the champagne, did some keg stands, did some stuff that you should probably only really do in college. And, uh, <laughs> and I woke up. I had a reckoning, you know, one of those mornings. Um, everybody has it a million times where you wake up hungover and you say you'll never drink again, but I stuck to it. And um, I'm not going to preach. you, you got to quit drinking. you got to stop drinking. Whatever. If you can drink in moderation, that's fine. But some people just should not drink. <laughs> Tell the and truth. And I'm one of those people. <laughs> You know, um, but hey, I, I found myself. I was lost. You know what I mean. I found I found where I wanted to be at, and uh, then the new year came in, and my resolution was to, you know, cut it out with the marijuana intake, and that's what I did. You know what I mean. I've been strict about it, and I and I've cut it out. Now you have man, is, I'll be blazing right in front of you, and you just be like, Nah, man, I'm good. I'm straight. <laughs> I'm good, man. I, it it's crazy. It's crazy because I used to be burning with you all the time. Hey, man, more than half my life I did that. You know, 14 years solid I did that. It's nuts. But, uh, you know, it was my time, and I was ready. You know what I mean? The only reason I was able to stop is because I was ready. And because right now, I'm telling you, if you try to give up anything, whether it's, you know, overeating, drinking, smoking pot, whatever it is, smoking cigarettes, if you try to give up anything in, in that first, second, third or even the day before, you know, um, if you say to yourself, oh, man, I'm going to miss this, don't even try it because you're not going to do it. Yeah. If, if you're ready and you are disgusted with it or you just don't want it anymore and you're bored of it or whatever, that's time to stop doing it. Because then you don't want it. And if you stick to what you want, then you'll stick to it. You know what I'm saying? It's true. I, I quit smoking cigarettes five, six times. Like right? a boss. And finally, uh, finally, I was—I got to the point where I was ready to quit smoking. I was disgusted with it. So I quit <laughs> disgusted. And it's, been, it's been three and a half years now, you know, since I've had a cigarette. I quit for eighteen months once, but when I quit, I was like, "Man, I'm gonna miss this." So sure enough, eighteen months. You came months back to it, yeah. Again. You know? Yeah, see, I don't know. I feel weird on that subject because I quit smoking recently too. You you know me. I was smoking them cigarello things for a minute, uh, yeah. like a few years. And I just quit, what, it was September or something like that, somewhere in the fall or last year. So I'm almost a year now without it. And I don't know, when I quit, I was just like, yeah, I'm just not really feeling this anymore. I'm just going to, like, quit it. And I think it was a musical choice. I wanted to get better for, like, breath control on stage and stuff like that. But um, I still feel like, I don't know, down the road, I, I I might smoke, you know. I got a cigar in uh, in the fridge that I'm just from like Havana that Jordan brought for me. I saw that in the studio, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I was really gonna spark it up the other day. I was just like thinking of it. I'm like, I wonder if this is gonna like make me want to smoke cigars, cigarellos again, or anything. I just wanted to do it as like a like random celebration of life type thing. It's like you know, you should celebrate these moments when like something big happens. But I'm like, screw that. Why do we have to celebrate every time something big happens? It's the same thing with like relationships. We always got to give our partner something when it's like their birthday or it's Christmas. Why not just give something to somebody random? out of nowhere so i'm like why not just spark up this cigar as my mini celebration to myself out of nowhere type thing you know what i mean (laughs) i didn't do it though (laughs) but i still think i will i want to just for fun it's not like i'm trying to be like a smoker or anything but i just just for the just for the fun of it 
Well, you know, be careful. I'm sorry to say, Rob, but you might start smoking again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see that, but I mean, hey, if that's in your cards, then. No, I don't think I will. Molly Gruesome, she's she's doing that the the like the in between thing too. She's been like trying to quit for a minute, and like I see her, she's got like one, or like now she's got these like super super thin. They're like tiny. They're like darts, little darts. They look like darts, man, like actual darts. Like that's how thin they are. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, like that's that's what she smokes now. As like a little kind of halfway in between not smoking and smoking, right? But uh, I don't know. It's it's interesting, man. It's probably one of the hardest things to do. And I was talking to uh, another friend of mine uh, the other day just about this. And she's kind of going through that phase of like just deciding whether she's going to quit or not. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like it's like that social thing that's like it's you know it's fun to do it around people and everything and they're like i I miss going out for smokes out for smokes at shows where i just hang out at the smoker pit and like talk with people at the smoker pit and i did that the other day with uh molly when we did the we were in toronto for the rock him shows we went outside for the smoker pit she, she went for a smoke and i i was so i was just sitting there like chilling I was all right, chilling, but then I just started smelling, and it was like the wave. Like there was probably thirty, forty people all around smoking, right, all in this tight little proximity, and <sighs> I'm surprised I didn't fall over and die. I was like, "How did I used to do this?" Yeah, man. And you know what? After a while, it just starts to disgust you. You know what I mean? Like I, I got, I get to the point where I'll notice someone smoking across the street five houses down I'll, I'll look up i'll be like who's smoking <laughs> the smell of it just turns me right off who's smoking i can't stand it i was actually when i was still in guelph um it was shortly maybe a month and a half after i had quit drinking and i was out I, I decided i was so bored one night i decided you know what i'm gonna go out to the bars and just hand out flyers and promote this event i got coming up it's a good idea so I went out uh, from like, I was, I think, 10 o'clock till last call, till, you know, the last buses were taking the kids back to the university. And um, did some great, man, I handed out hundreds of flyers. You know, a bunch of people asked me to freestyle to them and whatever. And, you know, I got a lot of buzz popping that night. And um, and I, I was on the last bus just getting dropped off at the university. And it was probably like my place was just like a 20-minute walk from the university, right? So I got off there. And right as the bus was pulling into the university bus stop, this guy lights up the smoke. <laughs> Just like literally we're about to stand up and get off the bus. And I looked to the person beside me and I looked back at him and I'm like, I have to say something. I have to say something. And I'm like, really? Like, are you that ignorant that we're going to be like, can't you wait 15 seconds? And sure enough, the guy was hammered and tried to fight me and whatever. But, you know, being the being the sober, bigger man about it, I just kind of walked away. But still, like, man, that really that really bothered me. What? That he just, like, did it right there? All, like... On the bus. Yeah. You know? And it's just, you know, <sighs> there's some people that don't smoke on this bus or that have quit smoking or that are trying to get over it or... Whatever, and they got to breathe that in. You know what I mean? It's illegal to smoke on the bus, isn't it? Oh, for sure it is. Yeah, but I mean, it was one of those late night after the last call buses that are free, and it was packed, right? So right at the back of the bus, nobody noticed, and the bus driver didn't notice, right? So yeah, and the bus driver like they don't even do anything anyway, even if they do notice that kind of stuff at that time. But I mean, there was so many people getting off the bus then that he wouldn't even have seen it. So yeah, but I was just you know for the people around me more so than even myself. I was like, come on, man. I have some respect. I, I may have been a little bit more, uh, you know, passionate than that, but... <laughs> Yo, buddy, what the heck are you doing smoking, man? Like, people breathing in that cancer. Yeah. Put it out. Put it out. But yeah, getting, Put getting back on out. topic here, um, you know, one of the things that I've, I'm facing right now from being sober and being being a cook and that um man i've i've got an eating problem i just like you know I, I i eat healthy and i eat you know as regularly as i should but i just have a problem stopping <laughs> i'm eating too much 
I'm eating too much. And you know why they're, <laughs> you know why they're calling me fatty switches, right? Because you switched you know? from being a fat man to being a skinny man or being a healthy man. I used to be big, you know. I was 240. I lost 60 pounds. Which isn't even that big, right? Like, Mer- we're not talking Mercury's big. You weren't, like, huge. No. But. No, I wasn't obese, but, I mean, I was unhealthy. Um, Shout you know, out to I, It was in my neck. It was in my arms. Like, man, I, I, I had to get links removed from my watch multiple links removed from my watch <laughs> like so you know it was a big difference right and um dropped under 180 over time toned down to 175 which was my goal weight that's pretty good man weight. that's like almost 100 pounds losing well 60 65 what you went to 175 you said right yeah from 240 oh sorry i thought you said 260 no no Okay. But yeah, so um, so I, you know, I almost just reached my goal weight, and mm-hmm. that's when I quit drinking and quit smoking, and you know, then I started eating, and <laughs> since then I've gained. I'm up to two hundred pounds now. So, you know, I, I'm I'm I haven't I'm not budging from where I'm at, but I'm just starting to get active again, and um, you know, my my next big thing. I, I told myself. I was talking to you about this. Um, you know, I've been so disciplined with with getting sober. You know, I, I'm taking the next step, and I'm getting disciplined with, with the health in my life. You know, I have all the knowledge. I do practice most of it, but I, I'm just, it's all about portion control now, being, being strict, being disciplined. I don't care how good it tastes or, you know, how bomb of a job I did making it. If I put too much on my plate, I've got to just be able to, shovel it into the garbage when I'm done, you know? <laughs> See, your life is like an experiment for me. I just, like, sit back and watch so I know what to what to do as far as, like, you know, <laughs> those those things go, right? Because, no, I honestly do think, because vices, I think about vices a lot in life, because I've had yeah. my vices too, right? Everybody's got vices. And, like, you're saying right now, you went, you, it's like, it's human nature to need some sort of thing to, yeah. like, I- enjoy that we get yeah, some sort of like, um, uh, what is it, self-indulgent pleasure out of it of just like enjoying something that we know we shouldn't have. Maybe I don't know what the heck it is inside of human beings that makes us want to do this, but it's pure example of it. When you just say that you quit drinking, you quit smoking, you quit smoking weed, you quit doing everything, but you're still picking up something that is unhealthy for you and something that you you're, you're overdoing it somewhere in your life. It's like, can we ever get to a point where we're nice and balanced in all areas? Like, uh, is that ever possible? I don't know. Is it? It's you know. Is it, it's a yin, yin and a yang to this world. We need a, a dark and a white, but we still we're trying to like find this balance everywhere. I think I think um, my solution is going to be I'm just going to try to control my eating, and I'm going to focus that vice into into achieving those pleasures by working hard and achieving my goals. That's what I want to do, you know, spoil myself, be selfish and just achieve the goals that I want to achieve. You know what I mean? And that's, I guess that's going to, going to be how I'm going to try to focus that energy. You know, it's not going to be easy and I'm sure there's something else that's going to pop up that I'm going to want to indulge in, but you know, just trying to be strict, trying to be disciplined, you know, um, I've definitely been making better choices without being influenced by, you know, substances and that but um but yeah it's it's just all about control self-control man it's not easy it is not easy you know people can think they're so in control but they don't even see the one little thing that they're they're just you know indulging in but yeah it's got to be something right it's got to be something so i'm going to overindulge in succeeding that's what i'm going to do happiness (laughs) that'd be a good thing to just get like addicted to happiness <laughs> you know yeah, what i mean some like people are addicted to sadness man like why can't you be addicted to happiness i think it's doable i've met some a couple people actually that i think are addicted to being happy yeah yeah they just need it yeah 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 i can think That's of good. a couple right now that are just like permanent smiles every time i see them they're always just smiling that's good man that's good good vibes good energy that's the type of people we want to surround ourselves with right just good, yeah. good, good people, good vibes. It pushes us in that same direction too, and we'll we'll stay happy. We'll keep the whole world happy. Man, I think that's what draws 
you know, me and like-minded people to yourself. Like you got really good vibes and, uh, and, and good people want to be around you and want to work with you. And, and you seem to be attracting that. So man, Thank good you, on brother. you. For, Thank you for, for putting those vibes out there. Just doing, doing the due diligence of love, love, just putting the love out there. That's all we got to do, man. Love a little bit more. Hate a bit, a little bit less. Yeah, man. All you need It'll is be love. good. All you need is love. Word up. Yeah. All right. That's what's good, man. Um, I'll let you go here. Now that we got talking about balance, it got me thinking about putting on atmosphere, trying to find a balance. So I think that's what we're going to kick into right now. Get a All little right. bit more hip hop flavor in the eardrums tonight. Much respects for uh, for taking the time to do a little chat with me, man. We'll definitely have to catch up soon. And if you can get in the studio sometime, I know it's hard for you to now that you're out in Hamilton to get up here on a Wednesday night, but once you get uh, back up on the road or whatever, let me know if you can pop in here and we'll do the do the live thing. Yes, yes.